Hi, it's me again. And in this video, I will just do a score video like all the other ones on the channel and basically show you how I do this. What uh, methods do I use and so on. So if you want to do score videos, then um, maybe you find something interesting from what I say and so on. So the first point is to find a score. And to be honest, I don't communicate this. Maybe people don't know that, but for me, that's always one of the most fun parts of this whole thing. Because I click around on IMSLP or other websites and I try to find interesting pieces, obscure names or obscure tonalities, and I use all possible search functions and filters and, you know, to just get to obscure and forgotten pieces. And I also listen to recommendations and I read the comments. And somebody wrote me some hours ago, well, there's this piece by... Emil Mianowski, Opus 3, The Romance. So I uh, downloaded it, it's on IMSLP. And I literally, I didn't know this piece before, I just did one playthrough <laughs> because of um, the reason that I have to check if this plugin which I'm using, here you can see the nice uh, graphical user interface here, uh, this is Steinway I'm using from VSL. Um, I have to check that I don't have overs or clipping uh, because of uh, the high sample overload and so on. That's very distracting if you play and then suddenly the PC is like... <coughs> and then it totally throws you off. So that's bad in a good performance. And now I found a setting and I, I will have to add the microphones later because um, it's just too much voices at the same. On the bottom right, you can see, by the way, here, it says zero voices. That's, that's the number of voices which are played. And when I really um, play a lot, so that you can, this you cannot hear now, but um, goes to 400. And if I activate more microphones, for example, all microphones, then we have 2000 or something like that. That's really what my PC cannot do. So enough of that. Um, well, what I will now try, I will try to not make any cut. <laughs> which is a bit dangerous, but let's see how this will work out. I will do now the second recording of this piece, and then I hope that I don't have to edit anything and so on, that I can just put it out on YouTube, basically. So go now here to this one, and um, I will start the recording, and in the end I have to edit this in the sense of putting the audio file to um, make the video in the end, but I will communicate everything what I do. And um, well, now I will start to play the piece. Maybe for visuals, I will let the uh, player on. So I press space that the recording starts and then I put this up and then I start to play.
Yo, so this was the performance, I think, um, 4 minutes 40. I think it was pretty okay. <laughs> I mean, as I said, this was not the second time. Um, I think I would maybe record it again a third time, but uh, maybe to make the video not so long, I will use this recording. And now uh, I get to the editing process, which consists of um, editing wrong notes and so on. And normally what I do is I edit the notes which I left out when I turn the page. I mean, I have a tablet and you know, um, I can normally very quickly do this. And also I will check for wrong notes, which I, I mean, this piece is um, quite straightforward in harmonies and so on. So I can do this like this. So normally, if I mean, if a piece is just a little bit more out of the typical late romantic uh, uh, way, then I have to be really careful because then I recently have had a lot of videos that because normally when I upload, then I put it not, not listed. And then I sit, I, I lie in my bed and I listen to my video. And then sometimes I notice like 1000 errors <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this can't be possible. And then I have to delete it from YouTube and and... And, and, and copy the description to Google Drive or something like that and, and re-up and, and re-upload it and then put it in the description and so on. So this is what I really try to avoid because it's just wasting time. And um, I think here I could almost just put it out because I haven't I haven't made glaring mistakes, I think. Um, but I want to have just a performance which is nice to hear. So it's not about, you know, like, um, hey, I didn't change any note and so on. So um, I will now listen through this again. And I think, um, so maybe I will just consolidate this before I do anything. Then I have the audio recording, which I can use in the end. And this is now taking a while. And I can now look at the score if I'm remember something which I completely missed. Um, so here's the first page. Uh, I think this was, I mean, maybe some notes were a bit too, too loud, a bit too, too not loud enough and so on. But um, the best performances I normally get, to be honest, if I if I played like four hours or five hours straight without any break, without without drinking anything, eating, you know, like being completely lost, in playing the music and then sometimes there's this moment where you really feel completely fine with the instrument or something like that but of course i can normally not play out for hours and hours so that's why i, I use this method of editing um the performance and also i can maybe tell the story here i had have had a lot of pianos in the in the past so um, obviously when I started my channel with uh, 100, 200, I mean, I had, I had like, I had zero subscribers or two or something. And I did, and I did just something. I put up videos and it was everything exciting. And um, I had a $100 um, keyboard. It didn't even have real waiting. And I, I played like the walls Caprice and you. <laughs> so <laughs> it was really exciting. Um, but it's I had really strange velocity curves and to to just get any any touch out of it, you know. Um, so there was a lot of editing, obviously, and then I got better and better and better instruments. I always saved up basically all my money. Um, it was very important for me to get a good instrument, so that was my priority, honestly. And now I have a quite good instrument, which allows for obviously. Um, expressing pianissimo and fortissimo and so on and so forth. And when I play on a real grand, I also notice that it's just not, it's an illusion to think, oh, when you have a real grand, it's super easy to just play staccato, staccatissimo, pianissimo at the same time, or just the Mozart runs. But that's also uh, difficult on a real grand. So um, I try not to fall into this trap. Now I uh, normalized it, what I also do. And um, so I'm looking now, maybe I should uh, listen to this. Okay, this is now, I forgot now to change anything. So you know what, I think I will just use this recording. What the heck? I hope that I didn't make any mistake. And um, in the end, I will listen to everything again. If I notice super big up mistakes, then I will delete this video, I think. <laughs> But I think it should be fine. Okay, so now I made this thing here, 
And oh, but I noticed a mistake, in fact, which is a bit unfortunate, so I have to do this again. Uh, but mistakes like that can happen because I forgot to put in the other microphones and I have to find the right one. So I go back to, not this one, to a, a mix page. This is the mix I use now. And I also tried a bit in my first playthrough that if I put these microphones in, then I have a nice room sound and I also have ribbon and so on. So this is the full library. In my opinion, it really adds to the spatiality and dimensionality. So I normally don't like to use the um, reverb, which you can see here. I didn't even know that it was on. Um, this is, as you can read here, added reverb on the top, at bottom left. This is algorithmically um, added reverb. So we can see here that there is a reverb section, which has uh, decay, pre-delay level and so on, damping. And I don't know if maybe this is convolution reverb. I cannot really see what they use, but I have also a lot of reverb plugins, but I always like more the room sound, the real uh, microphone sound instead of mathematics and algorithms and so on, if it's, if it's possible to avoid this. I mean, convolution reverb sounds really nice. I'm not against it, but if I have here a lot of these microphones, which <laughs> waste up a lot of space on my SSD, <laughs> then I want to use them. And here's a delay, but I think that should be fine. So now I will check if I made a mistake in the mix, or something like that. So I will just listen to the beginning here. Okay, maybe to a loud passage. And in order to see that, I go to, I look here where the wave is high, and then I know that there was a loud passage. Yeah, I think it's okay. I mean, it's maybe not, you can see my CPU was just in 92%. Um, I have a quite good CPU, so this is not really demanding a lot. Maybe we can look at the voices just for fun, how many voices there are. Yeah, so, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, there were 930 voices at the same time with very low latency. So this is, um, as you can see here, I have 12 milliseconds output latency. So 256 samples, buffer length and so on. So this is really uh, a lot of work for the computer. And now I will maybe not consolidate this because I think the loudness was actually pretty good. So I can maybe be a bit, little bit uh, risky here and increase the level here by 0 0.5 dB. That's a bit difficult. Yeah, whatever, 2.7 is fine. And now I should have a pretty much loudness normalized version. So I think we do not have to be really at the very um, zero dB limit. So that's, that's fine. We have a lot of dynamic range anyway in this recording. So now I go to export and MP3 file. And what I realize is that YouTube will anyhow put it down to a very low thing. So now whatever. I to put the last name first and then something else. Doesn't matter. And MP3 bitrate is I put it at 192. I think YouTube anyway puts it at 128. So I could just go for 128 honestly, but um, I think we hear uh, quite a difference between uh, this. So if I don't know if YouTube changes something or so then with that, at least I have um, really a better quality. I mean, I could go for 320, which I did for, I think, almost a thousand videos on my channel. But I do this now because it saves a little bit space and it's faster and so on. I think it's faster. And then I have, of course, everything on the highest possible setting here. Yeah, and now this will render again. So um, what I can do in the meantime, because I try to be quite quick with that stuff, is I put on this one and then I am on IMSOP. And then we have a nice picture here. And this is the piece, Romance. I download it. Which takes a bit. And then I can download it. And I put it, of course, I need to, I have a YouTube folder and then I have to write this again. It doesn't matter. 
So, and then I have this method of creating the score, which is a bit unconventional because there is a, um, um, there is a um, algorithm out there which does it for you, which is very nice. And um, so where am I now? This is this one here. Now here's the score. And then I use this, this thing, which is called PDF X edit. Then it opens and I put in the PDF here. And then I check, um, or I go, I go to here to export in builder, which is in English, maybe in pictures or something. And then I check where does the score start at page two and it goes to page five. So I put in here pages two to five. Then I go here and I say PNG um, or JPEG, it doesn't matter. And then here, the seal ordner is where does it go? It goes to here. This is very nice in Windows 10. I don't like Windows 10, but this is very nice. Here, I can always have the latest I think I opened. This was the Bekovic Peluda I did. And here I have now the romance thing. And then I put it in the so called uh, base folder, which is just the separated pages. So this everything I leave as it is, and then I choose 400 or 600 DPI, or maybe sometimes 300 when the video is very long. But this time I choose 400. And then what this now does, what this whole thing does, is it breaks up the PDF into pages. Now what the program doesn't like is when the numbers end here. So I have to rename this one with something that the last number, the last thing here is not a. Um, Digit. Okay, so and then there are several algorithms here which I apply, and this was really terrible to set it up. And honestly, I don't know if I could do it again. But um, the magic of this thing is, and this is um, very nice to someone whose name I forgot sadly right now, because I have to think of a lot of things right now. Um, so I close this. Yeah, and then we have the score. That's nice, huh? <laughs> So uh, that was quite a discovery for me, but whatever. Okay, this really takes, yeah, this now takes so long because there are so many voices and this is probably the loud passage which I played. So here it's especially slow because yeah, it's a lot of, lot to calculate. So what I will do is now open the movie maker and then I uh, control A, put it here in, make everything 60 seconds, and then I have this little effect here to fade in. And maybe, so I mean, I have still some time left, so what I can do is I open the um, thing here to have a little nice picture of the composer, which is normally three seconds, I think, okay? And then I can also fit the wrong one to fade it out. Okay, now I need the music, which I put here at the start of this. Now I have a nice picture, the composer says hello, and then we have the music. And ah yeah, this is now the sound, which you probably didn't hear. I can save also the project with the name, and then I close it. And now I go to the or the file where uh, the folder where the recording is, which is another one, but I have a lot of drives also but this is just a routine. And um, I think uh, OBS I'm using right now in such a way that the sound is not captured. So um, I will put in the description the point where I finish this process. What I will do now is I will listen through the piece once again, and by pressing O on my keyboard, I can make a cut here so that I have the cuts. Um, and then also by listening again, I can listen for mistakes. And if there are really very bad mistakes and errors, or I didn't see something, then this is one of the points. I have these, these checkpoints, you know, where I, I check if I missed something. And this is one of the points where I can see uh, where I have, I'm forced to listen to it completely again. I'm forced to listen completely again when I listen to it in, in the digital audio workstation here again. And then often I listen again when I have it unlisted. So at least three, four times I listen to the video to be really on the safe side. But of course I make a lot of errors. <laughs> That's clear, but I try not to make many errors. That's maybe the little uh, important thing. So this starts now.
and I'm talking now over this a bit, but you maybe can um, skip to the point where I um, am finished with this. it's important to find the melodic lines which is of course on the right hand and so on little climax there and we have this harmonic change here yeah you use the una corda pedal to squeeze out a little bit more dynamic range a little bit too loud. This I would have added it, but start the ritardando and then back to a tempo. Okay. That was a little too quite a bit. Oh and then there was a mistake. This should have been an F flat. And this is now the video which I will save and export. Yep, and now this also takes a while, but it's uh, it's four minutes, so this was maybe not the best choice for such a video because um, if the video is just one, two minutes and everything is just quicker from the rendering processes, but um, now I can as I said, I will always do something in the meantime, so I can open YouTube and then go to Uploads 
and maybe I close this one and I this one I can leave open because the name is here um, and sometimes additional information. And here I put in the video when it's done. So maybe I go back to the composer and um, oh yeah, that's a Wikipedia, that's nice. I always use Wikipedia because um, in the beginning of the channel, I really did a lot of research and I looked in articles and so on. And I even, I had even articles where I literally one hour would write down what is written in the article because I couldn't copy and paste it. Um, but now I just don't have the time anymore for that. So um, I use Wikipedia and then um, now I have to be careful. My internet is in such a way when I upload something, I cannot download anything. So I have to have everything open to make the full video, you know, so um, I will use some information from here. I will copy and paste this and um, then I should be fine. Okay, so let's go. I close this. And um, yeah, so now I will, okay, now I have this thing where I, if I copy and paste this, then I have this, I think, Polish L here. And um, I would, I think, change this to, maybe I even do the following. I will um, copy this here. And then I put an L here because if somebody searches it on YouTube, then um, maybe the algorithm, probably the algorithm understands this, but I really don't trust the, trust the YouTube algorithm. So I do it like that. And then I should not forget to paste it in here. And then I can copy and paste this one also. Copy and paste is always good. Oops, the wrong one. Good. And now I write the description. So um, maybe I can just copy the first thing here. And I was my middle names. Ah, oh, yeah, I know I have the other L as well. So blah, 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 blah. I think this is most people are not interested in that. So I really have just a year. So that we know, ah, okay, here, this is late romantic. Violinist, that's interesting. Um, he was born in, oh yeah, although that's, that's also interesting, he was born in Lithuania. I tried to really skim through and find the information, which uh, maybe I can delete this one, whatever. Russian Empire, um, yeah, Russian Empire, Lithuania, Leopoldawa, oh yeah, here are some names which we know. Um, ah, maybe I just put it here. So while this is uploading, I have a lot of time to really look at this stuff. Also, uh, symphony, okay. Da -da -dum, da -da -dum. Oh, his daughter married Arthur Rubinstein. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. His grandfather, John Rubinstein. Hmm. Okay. Thing here. Piotr Stoyarski, Kohansky, Kletsky, I know, but all the other ones not. Maybe Teacher of David Oistriak. And then there are selected works. Okay, good. A list of Poles. <laughs> North Pole, South Pole. Okay. Yeah, this is now the description. Sometimes I add something personal, like what I think about it. Um, maybe something like this. Video was done in the context of um, another video showing my workflow. And I write, so the performance is um, not, um, not, or whatever, maybe this is just a little bit silly to write this. Showing my workflow. Um, I don't know which in which if this is the first one or the other one video. Um, I think this one I will upload first. So was done in context of another video showing my workflow, which I'll upload soon or something. Like that. This is here fixed and uh, donation blah blah blah. I mean, it's really not going super well, but whatever. I mean, if I do this, <laughs> if I would do this for the money, I would have stopped like from, I don't know, from months ago. So, um, yeah. and then I select the thumbnail where I go just here and then it's spliced. 
And then I, oh, I, I, I like to pick the first picture because this program makes a very nice job at having the nice borders. And the rest I leave as it is, and then I monetize this. I have to do this because, you know, um, I need a little bit of reward for my work, <laughs> to be honest. And then I put it on unlisted. And then um, I wait until it's done. And I think at this point I can stop the video because now I'm done with everything. Here's something maybe E flat major. Dreamer. Cannot find anything other which is nice information. Yep, so here I wait until this is done and then I um, upload it to unlisted and then I listen to it again, maybe tomorrow or something, to be sure that I um, want to upload this. And then I can, um, at some later point, make the video uh, of this demonstration and then also upload this. And if you have questions, you can ask. I think there will be probably questions if this is pro with this program. But as I said before, um, this was really like a horror for me to set it up because I, I searched in thousands of forums and because I had millions of problems with it and so on. And then I was really frustrated and I did everything exactly like I found a video on YouTube, a demonstration. Maybe it was even the original one. Um, in fact, I'm now really interested. Why can C major seven, I think the name is of this channel on YouTube. Uh, as I said, I cannot now look at anything because, um, yeah, because this is now up, uh, uploading here. So anyways, I hope this was useful. You can leave a comment um, or a su suggestion if you think something can be quicker. I mean, without all the talking, all in all, I would this would have taken 20 minutes or something. So and this is a little bit to also show the speed which I do these things. Um, I try to be effective in the sense that when something is doing, when it's rendering, then I'm doing something else at the same time, you know? So, okay, maybe I can look it up now. Is this enough? Ah, uh, no, this is no, some other stuff. Um, maybe it's like this. Yep, this is here, this one. GitHub score processor. That's why I found it. And here is here are the commands which you can use. And then I use the um, sem templates in the YouTube video for the commands because I don't know every one of them. And um, you have an automatic way, but it doesn't work every time. So the score has to be really quite the normal score in the sense that it cannot be another color or uh, there cannot be distortions or whatever because for me it doesn't work and then you would have really to know and i also i also contacted him in fact in the beginning because i had so many problems so that i could get it work um yeah i think that's all i can say about this good so have a nice day